Here are the top stories for today, October 25, 2021. The Health Department says the Philippines is now low risk for COVID-19, but there is no reason to celebrate yet as Metro Manila and five other regions remain at moderate risk. The Philippines moves closer to getting 100 million doses of COVID-19 jabs with another 3 million doses of Sinovac vaccine, 2 million of which are government procured while 1 million were donated by China. Moving closer to recovery, the government allows increased operational capacity in some businesses following the release of the latest guidelines by relevant government agencies. And raising the Philippine flag, Carlos Yulo rules of all competition of the FIG Artistic Gymnastics Championship in Japan. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. As the holiday season approaches, the Department of Health stresses the need to strictly implement health measures to ensure that the reported decline in COVID-19 cases will be maintained. This comes after reports that more people flock to Manila-based Dolomite Beach. In an online press briefing, Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere appealed to the local government units to ensure that health protocols are strictly implemented. Vergere also said that while they see a decline in cases at the national level and in most regions, the majority of provinces and cities in the Cordillera region, Ilocos region, Cagayan Valley, Mimaropa, and Zamboanga del Norte remain at moderate risk to high risk classification with beds and ICU utilization rates at high to critical risk. Uh, nag improve po ang ating mga indices, yung mga indicators natin ay uh, nag improve kaya tayo ay napunta sa alert level 3. So ang binabantayan po natin ngayon for the National Capital Region, ito pong kanilang average daily attack rate. This means the new cases that are affecting the population for that specific time period. Kasi ngayon po nasa 8.89 pa ang NCR, kailangan bumaba siya to 7 or below so that we can further de-escalate itong National Capital Region. Perhera said among the measures needed to curb the spread of COVID-19 are adhering to masking and physical distancing, avoiding three Cs or closed spaces, crowded areas, and close contact activities, ramping up vaccination, especially of A2 and A3 groups, and maintaining short detection to isolation time to control transmission. Perjera said the department is still monitoring the number of cases to decide if they will recommend further de-escalation of the alert level in Metro Manila. Nakikiusap tayo sa ating mga kababayan no, na sana po uh, tayo po ay magtulong-tulong. Gusto na po nating bumunta doon sa sinasabi nating new normal. Uh, para po tayo makarating dyan sa new normal na yan, kailangan lahat tayo magtutulong-tulong. Kailangan lahat tayo magko-comply sa safety protocols. Hindi po namin inaalis sa inyo na gusto natin pumunta sa mga lugar katulad nitong Manila Bay para po tayo makapagpahangin, para po tayo ay magkaroon ng sunlight, magandang pan uh, uh, mga tanawin, okay lang po yun. Pero pag nakita na po natin na maraming tao, baka schedule na lang natin sa ibang araw, nakakaunti lang ang tao para hindi po tayo nagkakaroon ng risk to be infected o mahawa kayo sa sakit o makapanghawa rin po kayo. She also called on the local government units and the public to strictly enforce health protocols to prevent further transmission of COVID-19 cases. Tinanawagan pa rin kami sa ating mga kapwa national government agencies and to our local governments Sana po ipatupad po natin kung ano po yung mga safety protocols natin. Katulad ng lagi nating sinasabi, hindi pa po tapos yung laban, nandito pa po yung virus. Kailangan po tulong-tulong tayo, huwag tayong maging kampante, maaring lumabas, pero kailangan mag-iingat pa rin tayong lahat. PNP Chief General Guillermo Eliazar said that while there is a reported decrease in the number of COVID-19 cases in Metro Manila, Eliazar said that while Filipinos have penchant for celebrations and traditions, it is not yet time to be complacent. As such, more police are being deployed in the communities to ensure that health protocols are being enforced. Eliazar reminds the public to postpone or make gatherings limited to families. He said that doing trick-or-treat on October 31st may end up with a trip and treatment to the hospital when the children become infected. Eliazar also warned establishments to follow protocols or else their businesses could be closed down. 
Metro Manila is under alert level 3 until October 31st with 30% indoor capacity allowed for those who are fully vaccinated and 50% outdoor capacity regardless of vaccination status. The government said alert level 2 is possible if COVID-19 infections will continue to decrease. The government is all set for the pediatric vaccination rollout on Friday, October 29. The vaccines will be initially deployed to LGUs that have vaccinated at least 50% of their target population. In a lagging handa briefing this morning, WHO representative to the Philippines, Dr. Rabindra Abeya Singh said, pediatric vaccination rollout in the country for adolescents aged 12 years and above with comorbidities is very important to protect them from COVID-19. He also said that the rollout in the provinces shows that there is no inequity situation with regards to COVID-19 vaccines in the provinces and in the regions outside of NCR, especially for the most vulnerable A2 and A3 groups. Meanwhile, LGU vaccination sites, including hospitals, have already been inspected in preparation for the inoculation of minors. The Philippine National Police will also help secure the vaccination of minors with comorbidities. So with increased uh, availability of vaccines, we continue to urge the local government units in those regions to make sure that as they roll out vaccines, they ensure a prioritization uh, is also followed so that those most vulnerable groups are vaccinated. The World Health Organization recommends the administration of third dose for immune-compromised individuals, senior citizens, and received Sinovac or Sinopharm vaccines. However, it clarifies that priority will still have to be given to those who have not yet received their first and second dose. Now, in this allocation of third dose, we continue to urge that priority should be given to offer first and second dose to who have not had access to vaccines. And then we start the third dose administration with the most elderly. So, in other words, our recommendation is we start with the most severely immunocompromised, we start with the over 80s, then move to the over 70s, and finally to the over 60s. So this is what our position is now, so that we maximize the benefit of the third dose. The Interagency Task Force has released its guidelines in the observance of the UNDA season. Under the guidelines, all private and public cemeteries and memorial parks will be closed from October 29 to November 2, including columbariums and the like. These can open at 30% capacity on other days. Omnibus guidelines on the implementation of community quarantine shall continue to govern burial and cremation activities during the same period. The local government units are urged to pass an ordinance to implement the policy. The Intramuros administration will open its open-air sites as venues for morning exercises. This is exclusive for the vulnerable population starting Saturday, October 30. The vulnerable population includes senior citizens, persons with disabilities, pregnant women, and persons with health risks. They will be allowed to do their morning exercises at Fort Santiago and Baluarte de San Diego for two hours every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. They can also avail of the exclusive arrangement through an advanced ticket reservation system. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat said, This is an opportunity for the vulnerable sector to enjoy the green spaces of Intramuros for their overall health and well-being. Still to come, PCOO Chief Martin Andanar is pushing for the passage of a bill safeguarding the welfare of media workers. And getting back to business as usual, the government allows increased operational capacity of business establishments. Details ahead, keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, 
agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tisyo at itapon sa basurahan. O galiin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. The country received three more million doses of Sinovac COVID-19 vaccines last night, hitting the government's target closer to 100 million doses by the end of the month. Of the three million doses, two million were procured by the government and one million doses were donated by China. National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. lauded the Chinese government for donating 1 million more doses, saying China shows the virus can be defeated by cooperation and solidarity. Aside from deployment to key cities, the vaccines will add to the stockpile for the third dose vaccination of health care workers, senior citizens, and adults with comorbidities. A palace advisor proposed to make mandatory the vaccination against COVID-19 among workers in labor-intensive and high-risk businesses. Presidential advisor for entrepreneurship Joby Concepcion said he proposed to Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III the mandatory COVID-19 jabs for specific workers. Workers eyed for mandatory vaccination are those in hospitality, tourism, restaurants, retail and personal care, as well as labor-intensive sectors and business process outsourcing. Concepcion said labor-intensive workers and economic frontliners should be fully vaccinated the same way their customers are expected to be vaccinated as well. He said this would protect the unvaccinated as well as all other workers and their jobs. Concepcion also said vaccination should be expedited to avoid a surge as COVID-19 cases are declining. Presidential Communications Operations Office Secretary Martin Andanar is advocating for the enactment into law of the Media Workers' Welfare Act. In a meeting with members of the Surigao City Media on Sunday, Andanar said the bill is still waiting for the Senate's approval. He urged media workers to engage the senators whom they know and ask for the speedy passage of their version. The bill aims to ensure that media workers shall be paid the wages, allowances, and benefits provided by law. Media workers shall also be covered by the Social Security System, Pag-ibig Fund, and PhilHealth, provided with insurance coverage including a death and disability benefit and medical insurance. The guaranteed security of tenure after the probationary period of six months. Earlier this month, the National Press Club of the Philippines also asked the Senate to act on the pending proposal. At least 80 nano and micro entrepreneurs of the city of San Fernando, Pampanga, received subsidies from the city government through the Negocio Servicio sa Barangay program on Friday. The livelihood seeding program of the Department of Trade and Industry was first adopted by the city in December 2020. Each beneficiary has been awarded 8,000 pesos worth of subsidy that will be used to buy materials, machines, or other resources needed for their businesses. DTI Pampanga Provincial Director Elenita Ordoño said, Trade fairs, Christmas bazaars and caravans, trainings and market matching are being conducted to help local entrepreneurs introduce their products and services to consumers. To date, the Negocio Servicio sa Barangay has 311 beneficiaries including food manufacturers, garment makers, meat processors, ice cream vendors, and other entrepreneurs. In our business news, business establishments allowed to open in their localities which are issued a safety seal will be granted an increase of 10% points in operational or venue capacity. Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez said the increase was meant to encourage businesses to apply for the safety seal and strengthen health protocols in establishments and workplaces. Contact tracing applications issued by local government units will be considered for use while the Department of Interior and Local Government or DILG is working on the integration of staysafe.ph with other contact tracing apps. 
Meanwhile, establishments and workplaces are mandated to designate safety officers who will be in charge of enforcing public health standards in their areas. Other health protocols that will be promoted are the proper disposal of face masks through signages in designated facilities. The government also encouraged owners of air-conditioned indoor establishments and workplaces to procure carbon dioxide detectors to better monitor the adequacy of ventilation. More stories from the newsroom. No reason to relax. The police force is not underestimating the CPP-NPA despite its dwindling numbers. And another feat for Carlos Yulo as he dominates the vault competition of the FIG Artistic Gymnastics Championship in Japan. Back after a quick break, stay with the PNA Newsroom. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. Presidential Communications Operations Office Secretary Martin Andanar assured that the government will continue to carry out projects for conflict-affected areas and those freed from the influence of the leftist groups. Secretary Andanar was in Negros Oriental to promote the Duterte legacy campaign to local media and to the local government units there. In a radio interview, Andanar said a reason for the deferred implementation of anti-insurgency initiatives is political as some legislators doubt their benefits despite the clamor of their own constituents. In Negros Oriental, the local task force to end local communist armed conflict identified 26 target areas for 2022 under the support to Barangay Development Program of the ntf LCAP. Each cleared barangay will receive up to 20 million pesos worth of project assistance for the construction of various infrastructure projects, including farm-to-market roads, water and sanitation systems, agricultural livelihood, and technical vocational trainings. Religious leaders in Leyte agreed to address communist infiltration of the religious sector and support the campaign of the Regional Task Force 8 to end local communist armed conflict. More than 30 leaders and members of the United Church of Christ in the Philippines were among those who attended the peace forum with the religious sector held in Hinunganan, La Southern Leyte. The former tackled the infiltration, manipulation, and exploitation of the church by the Communist Party of the Philippines New People's Army, National Democratic Front, and their front organizations. Mayor Sonny Fernandez, who is also the chair of Hinunganan Municipal Task Force, El CAC, called on local church members to stop any indication of CTG influence in their churches. Meanwhile, government security forces are not underestimating the capability of the remaining few members of the CPP-NPA. Philippine National Police Chief General Guillermo Eliazar said communist terrorist groups will be more active this coming election period when they could extort money to fund their atrocities and recruitment. He warned candidates anew not to conspire with the CPP, NPA, and DF. Last week, President Rodrigo Duterte said the government is winning the war against communist insurgency in the country even as CPP NPA continues to perpetuate violence in a very small scale. 
Philippine National Police Chief General Guillermo Eleazar on Sunday held the Integrity Monitoring and Enforcement Group, or IMEG, for its successful operation against a cop allegedly linked in gun-running activities in Placer, Masbate. Staff Sergeant Carfilo Pahilino Jr., an intelligence operative of the Placer Municipal Police Station, was killed in a shootout during an entrapment operation on Saturday. IMEG operatives were about to arrest Pahilino after he allegedly sold three revolvers and a pistol to a poser buyer when the suspect drew a gun and fired at the arresting officers. Aside from allegedly selling loose firearms to criminal elements, Pahilino also had links with the Bustilios drug group. Eliazar said Masbate is one of the areas with long history of election-related violence. He said the operation was part of the PNP's efforts to ensure the credible and orderly holding of elections in May next year. Filipinos are encouraged once again to register for the Philsys National ID with the added perk of having their own ATM cards that they can use for banking and other financial needs. More on this from Marita Moahe. Filipinos have another reason to register for the Philippine Identification System and avail of the Philippine Identification or Phil ID card. Land Bank of the Philippines will give free ATM cards to Philsys registrants in support of the government's aim for financial inclusion of Filipinos. Those have registered for a national ID and have not opened a Land Bank agent banking card may register to open an account. To those who have yet to register for a national ID, the bank is also providing a free ATM card. Meanwhile, residents of Barangay Masara and nearby parts of Mako Davao de Oro participated in a recent Philsys registration held at the village gymnasium. The revitalized Police Barangay of Mako Cluster 16 team assisted in the mobile registration on October 18. More than 34 million Filipinos have signed up for the national ID as of September. Land Bank also reported on October 20 that at least 5.7 have opened bank accounts at their booths in selected registration centers. In other news, the Philippine Statistics Authority launched today the Philosis Ambassadors. Popcorn icon Sara Geronimo Giudicelli and husband Matteo Giudicelli are tapped to promote the Philsys advocacies, including its official jingle dubbed ID Natin To. Filipinos who wish to acquire their own Phil ID or the national ID are urged to sign up for free via the official Philsys registration website. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Muahe. And in sports, Kalo Yulo has become a two-time champion of the FIG Artistic Gymnast World Championship in Japan after dominating the vault competition on Sunday. Yulo bounced back from a fifth-place finish in his floor exercise final event on Saturday to deliver a near-flawless performance. Hidenobu Yonekura of Japan took home the silver medal, while Andre Medvedev of Israel won the bronze. Yulo also won a silver medal in the Parallel Bars event later in the day, losing only to Hu Shu Wei of China. Fellow Chinese athlete Shi Kong took the bronze. Yulo previously won the floor exercise final in the 2018 FIG World Championship. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The health department says, The Philippines is now low risk for COVID-19, but there is no reason to celebrate yet as Metro Manila and five other regions remain at moderate risk. The Philippines moves closer to getting 100 million doses of COVID-19 jabs with another 3 million doses of Sinovac vaccine, 2 million of which are government procured while 1 million were donated by China.
Moving closer to recovery, the government allows increased operational capacity in some businesses following the release of the latest guidelines by relevant government agencies. And raising the Philippine flag, Carlos Yulo rules of all competition of the FIG Artistic Gymnastics Championship in Japan. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear face masks and face shields, wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IVC13. And it is 61 days more to go before Christmas, and that's roughly two months and a day. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day. Stay safe, everyone.